Jurassic Park brought dinosaurs into modern times, but some of these creatures are insane. Number 10, Noto Colossus. The Noto Colossus was first discovered in Argentina in the Mendoza province. It was, like many dinos on this list, a member of the sauropod clade, which includes the famous Brontosaurus. The name combines the Greek word notos, or south wind, with colossus, or giant statue. And it was a giant with a humerus bone measuring nearly six feet in length. That's longer than any other massive dinosaur, even the ones scientists suspect were bigger. In 2016, scientists described the Noto Colossus in detail, with specific skeletal traits that distinguish it from its cousins. The foot bones in particular have a single, massive, compacted piece that is designed to bear incredible weight, which makes sense for a massive behemoth like the Noto Colossus. What that means is that its feet looked more like giant cylinders or tree trunks, with toes that were simply bound up in the foot rather than extended outward like most animals. Number 9. Giraffe Titan. Another goofy name for a giant dinosaur, the Giraffe Titan, was the tallest prehistoric beast. The name combines giraffe and titan, which makes sense as a specimen was discovered which was 12 meters or nearly 40 feet tall. But that specimen was not even an adult and evidence shows that an adult individual could be as much as 50 feet tall. The animal was first discovered in 1906 when an engineer discovered a massive bone sticking up out of the ground in modern day Tanzania. By 1907, a team of miners had unearthed and recovered multiple skeletons, and a multi-year fossil dig culminated in the mounting of a massive skeleton in the Natural History Museum in Berlin. The most interesting discovery about this and other giant animals? Scientists tried to determine whether or not the giraffe titan was warm or cold-blooded, and if it were warm-blooded, it would have eaten over 400 pounds of food every day. But it may have been a special type of warm-blooded animal called a gigantotherm, which means that because the surface area of the giraffe titan was small compared to its volume, it actually conserved heat incredibly well. In this case, bigger was better. Number eight, Spinosaurus. Forget the Tyrannosaurus rex, Spinosaurus is the largest carnivorous dinosaur on the books. It's debatable, but scientists believe that the remains we currently have support an estimate of over 8 tons and 50 feet or 16 meters in length. It resembled a massive crocodile with a giant sail on its back for regulating body temperature and showing off. After all, a peacock's tail is used to attract mates, so it's reasonable to guess that the Spinosaurus used its spiny back in courtship. This dino lived in both water and on land, and could eat anything from fish to fowl to other dinosaurs. And of course, in the Jurassic Park film series, the Spinosaurus replaced the Tyrannosaurus Rex in the third installment, where Spinosaurus snapped the T-Rex's neck and won the title of King of the Carnivores. The lesson? Don't mess with the Spinosaurus. Number seven, Quetzalcoatlus. This pterosaur, or flying dinosaur, was the largest of its kind. The species was first discovered in 1975, and it had a wingspan of about 12 meters, or nearly 40 feet. This makes it way bigger than even today's largest birds, or even extinct ones. The royal albatross only has an 11-foot wingspan, and the largest prehistoric bird, P. sandersi, was double that. But Quetzalcoatlus, named after the Aztec god Quetzalcoatl, dwarfed them all. It also had an unusually long neck. Maybe it could have been a social media superstar if Instagram and Twitter had existed during the late Cretaceous period. Weighing at a comparatively light 500 pounds, or 220 kilograms, it was the inspiration for a number of different light aircraft, such as experimental UAVs. It was as big as a Cessna 172, and scientists argue even today about how exactly such a massive creature sustained flight. It almost certainly glided around the prehistoric skies looking for prey. Number six, 
Saltasaurus. The lizard from Salta, which is an area in Argentina, is also from the late Cretaceous period. What's most special about this creature is that it was the first dinosaur discovered with bony plates embedded in its skin, giving it a sort of bio-armor. It was actually smaller than some of its titanosaur cousins, with only 40 feet of length and 8 tons of weight. This particular species gave up its long neck and limbs for the suit of armor, or osteoderms, and may have lived around the water like the modern-day hippopotamus. They could not jump or run because of their weight and structure of their legs, so herds had to defend from predators like well-defended tanks, kicking and biting while remaining protected due to their skin shields. Recently, a nesting ground was discovered in Patagonia, Argentina, with fossilized embryos that showed tiny, beady scales all over their bodies. This confirmed the researcher's theory of Saltosaurus, the first body armored dinosaur. Number five, Patago Titan. This massive monster was first discovered recently in 2014. Like many on this list, it too is from Argentina, and researchers classify it as being 121 feet and up to 75 tons in size. That's absolutely insane. It lived in a prehistoric massive floodplain where vegetation was plentiful and stomped around as master of its domain. Unlike some dinos on this list, researchers estimate that the Patago Titan only lived for about 7 million years during the late Cretaceous, which is of course still many times longer than humans have been around. A reconstructed skeleton of Patago Titan sits in the Natural History Museum of New York, but it's too big to fit inside the exhibit hall, so its head and neck poke out into the elevator lobby. Number four, Shonisaurus. Patago Titan may have been a land animal, and Quetzalcoatlus was a flying dinosaur, but Shonisaurus was the biggest dino to swim in the sea. Ironically, most of the remains of the massive ichthyosaur sit in the Looning Formation in the middle of the high desert of Nevada. The largest species, S. scianiensis, is confusing to researchers. They're actually not sure if it's a Shonisaurus or a member of the similar genus Shastasaurus. The differences are minute and hard to discern from fossils. Regardless, this monster aquatic reptile is nearly 70 feet in length and probably weighed many tons. Unlike later ichthyosaurs with dorsal fins, the Shonisaurus looked more like a goofy torpedo with flippers. It lived in the deep past, way back in the Triassic period, which was before the later Jurassic and Cretaceous. Number three, Argentinosaurus. Another Argentinian specimen, the Argentinosaurus, was first discovered in 1989, and its mass is estimated by researchers to be about 70 tons, which is larger than 10 full-grown elephants. It lived during a short period in the late Cretaceous, between 95.5 and 93.9 million years ago. Maybe the saying is true, the bigger they come, the harder they fall. Scientists using advanced computer technology, modeled the speed of an Argentinosaurus and estimate that it could not move faster than five miles per hour. So you could certainly outrun it if you absolutely had to. But it was so much bigger than a T-Rex, measuring over 100 feet in length, that it could have squashed the predator underfoot or sat on it. So its lack of speed was not much of a handicap. Number two, Titanosaur. These were the last surviving long-necked dinosaurs at the very end of the Cretaceous period. 65 million years ago, titanosaurs looked up at the sky as a massive asteroid pummeled the planet with the force of trillions of tons of TNT. Containing diverse species, this group has fossils on every continent, and many researchers consider them, not the predatory T. rex or other carnivores, to be the true masters of the prehistoric world. After all, who would mess with a dinosaur as big as a jumbo jet, with feet the size of small cars, or with body armor and a tail that could break your back in a single thump? And yes, they grew to these insane sizes based on a diet of trees and grasses. So eat 
your vegetables. All these dinosaur classifications are tough to keep straight, but the key is that scientists keep discovering massive sauropods and finding new and creative ways to name them after big objects or large mythical beings. We've seen some massive monsters, but there's still one behemoth left. But first, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, and sound off in the comments below. What dinosaur would you most want as a pet? Number one, Dreadnoughtus. Another animal named something ominous and large. Dreadnoughtus literally means fears nothing. Why? Renowned paleontologist Kenneth Lacovara wanted to show everyone that it was the herbivores who were the toughest animals in a given environment. With a name like a battleship, it is appropriate that the Dreadnoughtus is as massive as any land animal ever gets. Compared to other titanosaurs like Argentinosaurus and Patagotitan, scientists have unearthed a nearly complete Dreadnoughtus skeleton, giving them a much more accurate estimate of the beast's size. All in all, we have over 70% of the types of bones for a Dreadnoughtus shranny, much more than for cousin species. And yes, it is over 40 tons and over 85 feet long. The specimen that scientists discovered was a juvenile and only that big. That means if the individual had been allowed to grow to full size, it could have reached absolutely gargantuan proportions of 150 feet and 100 tons. No one knows for sure, but with advanced techniques, paleontologists may find more specimens in the future and tell us more about these behemoths.